Obsidian, it's not just a valuable commodity in Minecraft, was also a hugely important resource for indigenous peoples across Western North America. And we're at one of the most important archeological sites for obsidian in all of the region. And that's Obsidian Cliff here in the north part of Yellowstone National Park. Obsidian is formed from rhyolite lava, that's high silica lava that comes out of the ground and it quenches, it freezes, and it forms a glass that when it fractures can makes a very sharp surface. So it's great with arrowheads or knives. It's still used in scalpels for surgery because it is such a great cutting tool. This particular lava flow erupted about 106,000 years ago. It's north of the caldera and it was very hot when erupted. So there are no crystals in the obsidian. So nothing getting in the way of making those great cutting tools. There's a lot of obsidian in the caldera too from all of the rhyolite lava flows there, but there are also a lot of crystals in that particular type of obsidian. So it's not as good of a resource. Now, based on the chemistry, of the obsidian cliff obsidian, you can actually track artifacts all over the place as they were traded or they traveled far and wide. They've been found in Canada to the north and as far east as Ohio. So obsidian cliff, a tremendous resource for obsidian for indigenous peoples for thousands and thousands of years. Now, before you get back to playing Minecraft, let's talk more about Yellowstone, especially what happened in terms of seismic activity, ground deformation and geyser activity over the past month. It's been yet another quiet month for earthquakes in the Yellowstone region. The University of Utah seismograph stations located just 70 earthquakes during the month of October. The largest was a magnitude 2 right at the end of the month in the south part of Yellowstone Lake. As usual, most of the seismicity occurred in this band that runs from Hebgen Lake into the north central part of Yellowstone National Park. That included a swarm of about 15 earthquakes that occurred early in October just to the north of West Yellowstone, Montana. So background activity in terms of earthquakes in the Yellowstone region. Turning now to ground deformation, this is vertical deformation at the Lake GPS site on the east side of the caldera, the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. This plot spans two years. Each blue dot is one day of data. Upward trends indicate uplift and downward trends indicate subsidence. Subsidence has been ongoing since 2015, but it's interrupted in the summer months by a pause or slight uplift due to changes in seasonal groundwater and snow melt. Let me go back to subsidence during the winter months. So you can see in the summer of 2024, we had that slight amount of uplift. And in late September to early October, we transitioned back into that subsidence. So the seasonal signal in terms of deformation is over. And now turning to the tallest geyser in the world, Steamboat Geyser in Norris Geyser Basin. It erupted on October 7th, that spike right there in this temperature uh, plot. That's from Steamboat's runoff channel. This was the fifth major eruption of the year. And after that eruption, we went back down to measuring just daily temperature variation. So this means there's no minor activity of the geyser happening right now and through the end of October. So it may be several weeks to months before Steamboat erupts again. Well, that does it for the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory monthly update. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions at all, leave us a comment or drop us a line via email. YVO Web Team, that's all one word, at usgs.gov. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.